Hello, my name is Pandora, and this is a video on using Inkscape to help you print and cut in SignCut. Also, how to trace using the bucket tool, using layers so that you can send to SignCut, and also some of the issues that might arrange, arise while you're trying to trace things. So, to cut and or create paper piercings, I need to go through some steps to get there. In order to do that, I'm going to be using the layer palettes, and layers are really useful and not half as scary as some people think. There are a couple of ways to bring the layer palette up. One of them is to go up to the layers menu here, come down to the bottom, and click on this icon. You can also press shift, control, and the letter L on the keyboard, and either way, this layers palette will arrive. If for some reason you've managed to minimize it, and you do that by clicking on this little arrow here, it says Iconify. Interesting word, that. Anyway, if you click on it, you'll find it disappears, but you can see it's sitting there, so all you need to do to bring it back is to click on it. You may also find that your player, layer palette, when it comes up, looks more like that. In other words, there's very little room up here. In order to expand it, because we will be using two or three layers at least, all you need to do is move the mouse down until it becomes a double line with a double-headed arrow, click on it, hold the mouse, and drag it down. Now, what you'll be able to see is I actually already have two layers in my file. I have the registration layer, which you can't see, and that's because this is an on-off switch. It's called a toggle switch. Basically, if you click the eye open, you'll see you can see the registration marks, and if I click it shut, you can't see them. I've also locked it. That means I can't do anything if I just open it up again. If I try and grab those, you see I can't grab the registration layer. So using the padlock is a really good idea because it stops you doing something you don't mean to. What you'll also find is that inevitably at some point you will want to do something on a layer and it won't do a thing. Go and have a look. You may have locked it when you weren't looking or weren't thinking. So. We're going to be working on the image layer, and if you notice, I just managed to lock it because all I did was move up, directly up. So I'm going to unlock it again so I can get to it. One of the things that you need to be aware of when you're trying to do print and cut is the lines. If I bring in a couple of guidelines here, and I'm going to do that just by clicking and dragging, just to give you an idea. When you line up using the contour cut, Sign cut will only cut inside these registration marks. So if, for instance, your graphic sits there, it will cut off anything that's outside this line. So do make sure that your graphics, even though they can be much bigger, are inside these imaginary lines. And I'm just going to get rid of my guides just by clicking and dragging. By the way, you know you can get rid of a guide when it turns red by clicking and dragging on it, and it'll just disappear again. So we've got the image selected, and one way you could do it is certainly to use the Bezier tool and literally click and drag and click and drag and go around the image. But that's quite slow and quite laborious, and I've discovered this other method which I find much more useful. I'm sure other people have put videos about it, but I had difficulty finding one, so I thought I'd share this. So what we're going to do here is, while we've got it selected, come down and choose our bucket tool. So we click on it once, and what you'll find is it brings up a whole new toolbar that you perhaps haven't seen. And the first thing we're going to do is come over here and use what looks like a paintbrush to me, and that resets all of the bucket tool and set at... The first thing we're going to do is click on this little icon which looks like a paintbrush to me and it says if you hover over it, reset paint bucket parameters to defaults. Use Inkscape preferences tools to change defaults. Well, that's a whole mouthful, but basically it takes it back to the default setting. I have already set my stroke to pink and I've got the stroke width at one pixel. What we want to do is come across to this side and for clicking on this downward pointing triangle, select Alpha. And that will attempt to select our base. So all we need to do is come over to the image and if you can see the bucket, there's like a little dribble part and you just simply click on it. Now you can see that we've got a couple of issues instantly 
And what I'm going to do is click on the magnifying glass and just highlight, draw an imaginary box around this area so we can zoom in. And you can see we've got some dotted lines and we don't really want that. So that's not really very successful. So we'll zoom out again and we'll use the undo button. Why is that happening? Well, it's to do with the threshold. So up here, the second button along here, it says threshold. And if we increase this, and it's really a bit of a guess thing, to be honest. Um, I haven't found a scientific way of working out whether it, when it works or not. I just practice it and undo it with each image. It doesn't take more than a couple of seconds, so I don't have any issue with that. So again, if we come back and literally click on it, you can you can see now we have a pretty good trace. So let's do the zoom and come in a bit. What you might notice is that down here we have a bit of an area where it hasn't really worked so well. Again, if we come over to the magnifying glass, click on it, I'm just going to click and drag across this area so we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to reselect my bucket tool and then holding the shift key down, I'm going to come over here and select this area. And if you can see now, We've included that area in our trace. Let's use the zoom button at the top here, which is zoom to fit page. And you can see now that we have a pretty neat, tidy trace, and it's taken us just a few seconds. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the image layer quite a lot here. We're working on the image layer. What we want to do is have the image layer with the base image on it, and then have new layers with all the different tracings that we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is click, uh, make sure that this image layer is blue, so it's selected, and then click on the plus sign. And that will bring up the add layer. You can do this from layer, add layer, but since the layers palette is open, we might as well use it. You can see the word layer is highlighted, so I'm just going to type outline, and then I'm going to click on add. Now, if I click back onto my image layer and I use my selection tool, I'm going to grab the outline. Now, just to make sure it is, I'm going to move it slightly. Yes, that's the outline, but I want it in exactly the same place. So I'm going to undo that move. And then we're coming up to the layer palette. Click on layer and then click on move selection to layer above. Now looking at the screen, nothing much seems to have happened. But you remember our toggle switches? Well, let's just switch off the registration marks and then let's switch off the outline layer. And hopefully what you can see is the pink disappears and when I toggle it back, it reappears. So if I then clicked on the registration layer, deselected, I could send this to print and then we can then feed it into the machine and using a simple contour cut, we could cut it out. So after you've printed it, what you need to do is to, well, sorry, let me back up a bit. What you would need to do in order to be able to cut it out is first of all, switch off the outline layer because you really don't want to print that pink layer and then send the file through file and print to the printer. Once it's printed, you need to come back here and then switch on your outline layer, switch off your image layer because SignCup doesn't like dealing with images, and then we can go extensions, export, center sign cut, and using our special contour cut and simple contour cut, line up the registration marks. Now there's a couple of really terrific tutorials out about simple contour cutting, so I'm not going to go through that because we'll be here all day if we start that one. So I'm just going to cancel that out and come back and come back to my image layer. So, so far we've got an outline layer which is quite capable of being, of cutting out the outline. But what happens if you want to do paper piercing? Well, what I'm going to do is close the outline layer and just before I do, these padlocks are really useful. So I'm going to click on the padlock and that means that even if I try, I can grab the bottom graphic, but I can't grab this one. So I'm just going to move that back so I don't lose the positioning. Now because it's locked, I'm now going to switch it off and I can't see it. I'm also going to close the eye on the registration just because I don't want anything to get confused.
So we've got our outline and we know that'll work. But let's say we want to do paper piercing and we want to cut out the green and the orange and the red. How do we do that? Well, the first thing I would suggest you do is making sure you're on the image layer, click on the plus sign and get a new layer. And I'm going to call this one green since that's what I'm going to be doing. Click back on the image layer over here and then go get the bucket tool and come in and click on the green. Now you can see that what's happened is we've got another outline and that's not actually what we intended. So why is that? And the answer is because, quite frankly, I forgot to do something. So let's undo it and try it again. So what we need to do is to come back up to the bucket toolbar and click instead on visible colors. Now, I would suggest you also bring the threshold that back down to about 15. And then let's try clicking on our green area. And if you can see, we have a pretty good trace. However, we've got the same issue again. So I'm going to zoom in again by clicking and dragging using my magnifying glass. And again, by holding the shift key down, by selecting the bucket tool first and then holding the shift key down, you'll find that we've now got the whole green part selected. Come up to layer. And because you can see we're on the image layer over here, I'm going to say move selection to layer above. And because our green is immediately above us, we should see that this is now on the layer above. And I can show you that by clicking on the eye to close the green layer. So you can see there it is closed, there it is open. So I'm going to lock the green layer and close it so we don't do anything wrong with that. Let's zoom out again by clicking on the zoom to page view, come back to image layer and click on the plus sign. And this time we're going to create the orange layer. So again, we check that we've got visible colors up here. Our threshold is 15 and making sure as I nearly didn't, you see we're sitting on the orange layer. So we need to click onto the image layer and then come over and click on the orange. And what you should see then is that we've got all of the orange part highlighted. So again, we come to layer, move selection to layer above. And again, if I switch off the orange and switch it on again, hopefully you can see, if I zoom in a bit, you can see that the orange is there and is not there. So again, I'm going to close it down and lock it. I'm going to come back to the image layer and I'm going to click on and add a red layer. Make sure I go back to the image layer and this time click on the red. Now because these are individual elements, what you can do is hold on the shift key and one by one click on each of these red areas until they're all. Let's try switching it on and switching it off. So let's zoom out for a moment and just click away. So what have we achieved? Doesn't appear to be very much, but let's switch off the uh, image layer and I'm going to lock that for the moment. And let's start with the outline. So there's our outline to do print and cut. And remember, when you're doing that, you need to also send the registration marks. So you need your outline image visible and your registration and your registration layer visible. If you don't have this visible, sign cut won't know where to cut. So you have to have that visible when you send it to the printer. If you're doing paper piercings, you may want to cut the outline in one color. And then if I switch that off, you can cut the green as a layer as well. Then we go Extensions, Export, Send to Sign Cut, about how you take an image like this, how you can either create an outline, and let's switch that on, so that you can print and cut. And don't forget, you've got to switch on your registration marks and or create individual layers so that you can cut them and make a paper piercing.